If you want to calculate velocity in physics, you just calculate the ratio between the distance you traveled and time it took you to cover the distance, right? Similarly for acceleration. You take the ratio of velocity and time, all pretty straightforward. Then why in physics we write these d's in our expression for velocity or acceleration? Let's consider a linear motion of this car where we depict its position in time as a linear graph. Here we can ask what's the velocity of this car and the answer is in fact pretty easy. We just take its position and compare it with time and we have the velocity we are looking for. You can notice that no matter what point on the graph we take, the velocity is still the same. So far everything is ok and we don't need any d's in expression for velocity, right? But what if the position graph would look something like this? Well again, let's take some point on the graph and compare it with the time it took to get there. And we have the velocity on that point, correct? Well, this is actually wrong. This approach only tells you about the velocity of the car on the time interval between t and t0, but it doesn't say anything about the velocity at the point t. You can imagine a scenario where you travel with your car and make a stop for coffee. At the coffee bar, your velocity is zero, but your average velocity of the whole trip is not zero because you have already traveled some distance. If you try to calculate your velocity at different points, you would see that even though you are not moving, your calculation would give you something that is not zero. The more proper expression for velocity looks like this, where we take the difference in distance interval compared to time interval. Now we have much better definition of velocity, because we can ask what's the average velocity at certain time interval, and if it's a small enough interval, we'll be approaching our true velocity at a specific time point. Now let's go back to this scenario where car's position is this specific function of time. If you want to know the exact velocity at time t, we have to create small interval at this point. Now we can calculate the average velocity on this small interval, so, so we have the position at the time t plus delta t minus the position at the time t, which is our distance interval, and we divide it with the time at t plus delta t minus t. So we get this expression for the average velocity at this small interval. Since we said we want exact velocity at the time t, we take the limit of this expression as delta t goes to zero, and this is the definition of derivative, which we denote as dx by dt. Let's try to calculate the velocity at each point for the position function that looks like this. Our car is moving to a certain point and then back to its starting point but its velocity is changing during the journey. If we calculate the derivative of this function with respect of time, we would get the velocity function as a function of time. We could just use the basic rules for derivatives, but we are going to calculate this using the definition we derived. So our position at the time t is this, and the position at time t plus delta t is this. If we plug them into our definition, we get the following expression. Now we can square the brackets and we get pretty long expression, but don't worry because many terms just cancel out, so we are left with this expression. Now we can cross out delta t's and we get this expression. Now if we take the limit as delta t goes to zero, we have the following result for the velocity function. This tells us what is the velocity of the car at every time point during the journey. And this is why we use derivatives in physics, because we have now much more information about the system. We can also ask about how the velocity changes with time, which tells us about acceleration. Calculating this is simple, as you just take the derivative of velocity with respect of time, and you get constant. Since acceleration is constant, better example for this trajectory would be a vertical throw in a gravitational field. As you can see in this animation, where our ball 
started off with some non-zero initial velocity against a constant gravitational acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. You might be familiar with this expression for position function of a particle in a constant gravitational field that looks like this. The velocity and acceleration are just first and second derivatives of this function with respect of time. So that's it for this video and if there is something not clear just let me know in the comments so we can discuss